Yes, uh, look, that is, uh, I think, without a doubt. Uh, and that is for a number of different reasons. You know, um, they find, you know, if, they, if they're involved in, in hunting clubs, for example, then they will breed them with, with greyhounds to get a bigger dog with longer legs to, uh, to, to uh, look for an advantage uh, um, in that environment. Um, if they are involved with dog fighting, God forbid, they, then they would look at uh, bringing in pit, pit bulls into uh, uh, that uh, environment. So you know you will, and but you will find that whatever the fashion is, you know, if uh, you go and watch a movie like uh, John Wick Four, I think it was, or was it Three, where they had the uh, um, uh, uh, Belgian Malinois that. Uh, um, that were prevalent in that movie. Whatever the fashion becomes, you know, those dogs get a, an extended reputation. You watch a movie like Babe and everybody wants a border collie. You watch 101 Dalmatians and everybody's looking for Dalmatians. And so fashion plays quite a large part in, in what people think of or, or choose in terms of, uh, of their animals. Um, and, uh, and that of course can can lead to you know affecting the, the the genetic material of these animals it's important i think at that point at this point also to to mention the the very important distinction between uh, the township dog and the indigenous land race um, the township dog uh, uh, we must make the distinction is not an africanus um, you might have a chance of uh, uh, filming little Tabiso that we have over here. Uh, um, she's a township dog uh, rescued from, from the, the road, from the freeway. Um, and she's very distinctly not an Africanist, not in her behavior, not in, in uh, the way she, she uh, uh, acts. She's much more hyperactive than these dogs. She's busy all the time. Um, these dogs, you can see, conserve their energy. They're absolute layabouts until you need their energy and it's there, it's ready, it's, uh, the batteries are not uh, depleted. Um, so the reason we can say that with relative confidence, a lot of people say yes but my dog looks Africanus, uh, we got it from the SPCA, it was picked up as a, as a rescue and it looks like an Africanus, you know, can you confirm that it's an Africanus? Well firstly, if you're in a conservation environment, to be absolutely certain that it's an Africanus, you need to know where its parents came from, who they are, what they are. So if you don't know that, you can't say, you know, you can't say, well, the dog looks like an Africanus, uh, um, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that it will be an Africanus. So the only way you can say with certainty is if you are at least keeping records of, uh, of where dogs come from and which kraals they come from and, uh, and you, know, so you know a bit about the history of, the, of that uh, context. So that's the first thing. The second thing we, we understand about uh, uh, township dogs is African people moving from a rural environment where they will have uh, Africanus dogs. When they come into a urban setting to look for work, they don't bring their dogs with them. It's a liability. They're not sure where they're going to be staying. To have a dog with you, you, you know, it's an absolute liability. Uh, to have to, you're not sure when you're going to eat, to have to uh, uh, um, spend your resources, at least in the beginning of your, uh, of your stay in, in urban areas uh, looking for work, to have to spend those resources on a dog is again a liability. They simply don't bring their dogs with them. And then you would be robbing your homestead of a valuable resource who functions in your area. So we say with relative uh, uh, confidence that if a dog is from an, uh, 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 an urban uh, context, there you can see the... That's it, there. off they go. But that's not even a wild one. I mean, I've seen little Nati take off when she was a puppy to such an extent she knocked herself out. She took off so violently, she tripped and knocked herself out. <laughs> that, was, that was how much energy can go into uh, some kind of distraction. Um, I, with uh, Inchasuti, the, the dog that we, uh, um, the first Africanus that we had, running in the back here, um, one time she got separated from us. And uh, I was 
devastated. I mean, dogs are not remarkable mappers, you know, in their minds. They, uh, one of the, the, the intellectual skills that humans hold above dogs is our ability to map an environment. Dogs are not particularly good at that. Um, it's one of the things that differentiates our thinking. They're incredibly good problem solvers. They're, you know, a dog has got the, the mental capacity of a four-year-old child. So anything you're, that a four-year-old child can reason out, a dog can reason out, no problem. They are extremely intelligent animals. But their mapping, their brains are not built for mapping. Their brains have a different shape. Um, and so this idea of being able to place yourself in a context is something that dogs don't do very well in general. Um, so we were off in the, in the hills at the back here with, uh, with Suti and the rest of the pack and I managed to keep them close the whole time because they'd run off and sniff things and what have you. And uh, at some stage coming back over the hill I noticed Suti wasn't with the others and, uh, and they came uh, to me and, and I thought the, the best thing to do is to get them all back home and I got them back home and I took the car out thinking I'd lost my dog and as I say we can be 10, 10 15 kilometers away from here no problem um, so I thought I'd lost my dog and I got the little bucky out and we were driving and as I was coming up the hill at the back here there was Suti merrily trotting down the, uh, the trail coming back home she was on the way you know, uh, uh, back home. So um, I do think that they can sort of uh, uh, hit the, the horizon if they get uh, interested in, in something. They can take off and, and keep running and get lost. It's something I always fear when, uh, when we're free running at the back. So, uh, but they ha I haven't lost one yet. So, but yes, I would not rate them as remarkable mappers I would not rate any dog as a remarkable. So caricature breeding is um, when you uh, identify a breed the way a breed is established is uh, you get interest in a dog from a certain area the dogs in this area they sort of look alike they do great for us we we like the way they run uh, we like the way they help us hunt or if we're herding sheep we like the way that they accompany us and and uh, work with the flock so um, you you identify what you would then be able to identify as a land race, an in indigenous uh, animal that has involved in, uh, evolved in a, in, a, in a context and, um, and has a certain look and shape, a shape of mind, shape of body that has evolved naturally. Um, you would then say, okay, uh, let's call this land race a breed. Let's get it registered by the FCI, the Fédération Synologique Internationale, I'm not French so I'm not sure my pronunciation is very good, but uh, um, you'd get it registered as a breed. To register it as a breed you have to write a description of what this animal should look like. You write a description, you give its proportions, its colours, uh, uh, and you describe what it does and, and, and what, what you expect it to, uh, how you expect it to perform. And then you identify your founding stock. So you would take a, a, um, a number of dogs and you'd say, this is my founding stock. You close your, your breeding uh, with that founding stock. So you're only breeding with that number of dogs. Now, if that sounds scary to you, let me tell you how scary it is. Uh, uh, um, golden retrievers, for example, come from two dogs. Lord Tweedmouth's two dogs. Uh, um, they are the founding, the complete founding stock of the entire breed of golden retrievers. So every golden retriever you have is only working with the genetic material of two original dogs. German Shepherds come from six dogs. Six dogs established the entire breed of the German Shepherd population. So any pedigreed or thoroughbred German Shepherd that has papers is carrying the genetic information of only six dogs. So you can imagine that the chance of crossing out any kind of uh, genetic uh, uh, defect becomes significantly reduced because there's not enough additional material to, to cross out any kind of defects. Um, so that is, that is quite a serious problem with, uh, with line breeding. But the other problem comes in when you describe a, uh, um, a condition where you would say the dog uh, uh, has dark eyes. Or in German Shepherds, you would say, for example, 
we like the dog with the slopy back because it seems to have a, a proud stance. So over generations, the first generation of German Shepherds you have would maybe have a slightly slopy back when you describe it and you say, well, that looks great. So you describe it, the judges then evaluate uh, uh, the dog with the slopiest back gets to be the champion and he has the biggest impact in the next generation of, of puppies can sometimes be as much as 80% impact in the next generation of puppies in that breed. And then suddenly all the puppies that come out have the same back that their father had but one comes out with a slightly slopier back and then he stands out more than the others. And so over time you would have a dog that maybe starts with a back like that and eventually the back becomes so slanted that the, it starts affecting the hips and their motion and, and uh, you know, of, of movement gets affected, uh, the skeleton gets affected simply because the, you're compounding a certain aesthetic trait that is described in the, in the starting of the breed. You're compounding that aesthetic uh, uh, trait uh, uh, to such an extent that it actually becomes an aberration. When you're doing a cartoon, you know, uh, uh, of let's say a political figure, and let's say the political figure you choose has got big ears, you would draw the cartoon with even more exaggerated ears. And that is a caricature. So in, in breeding, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the kennel union way, you are looking at the aesthetics of the animal. And so these features that you've described in your, in your uh, breed become exaggerated uh, as you go on in time. And, and that's not a, a healthy way of, uh, of breeding. That's part of what is uh, dooming modern dogdom, uh, this, this process of, uh, of the kennel unions, as opposed to the African methodology, which is placing the animal in a working context and how it performs in that working context uh, is, is uh, where the value is derived. The Native American Indians have got a beautiful saying that says, it goes like this, uh, um, a good dog cannot be a bad color. And that really illustrates that a good dog is based on value, not on aesthetics. It's not based on something as arbitrary as color. It's based on how that dog performs. Uh, and that's really the same methodology that, uh, that African uh, uh, people have used for centuries. Uh, um, doesn't matter with dogs, with, with cattle, with uh, uh, um, uh, uh, chickens, sheep. Uh, um, it, uh, they, they've been following that kind of practice for centuries. Uh, and, and dogs are no different. Their, their indigenous dogs are no different.